So this lesson is to calculate the formula for developing the surface of a rectangular prism. As we look at a rectangular prism, there's a few questions we need to ask prior to developing the formula. Question one, how many sides does this figure have? Question two, are any of these sides the same as another? Question three, what shape are the individual sides? And question four, how do you find the area of that type of shape? Well, as we look at question one, how many sides does this figure have? Well, it has a top and a bottom, a front and a back, and a left and a right, thus giving us a total of six sides. Do any of these sides, are any of these sides the same as another? Well, the top and bottom are the same, and the front and the back are the same, and so are the left and right. So each pair, each side has its own matching side. What shape are these individual sides? Well, each side is, consists of a rectangle. And how do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, by simply multiplying one of its dimensions by the other, normally length times width. As we look at these six individual sides, there's no reason to calculate all six of them because if we know the bottom, we'd know the top. If we knew the front, we knew we'd know the back. And if we knew the left, we'd also know the right. So our purpose is to see if we can just find the three of these and then double that. So let's start with this bottom piece. If I was trying to calculate the area of this rectangle, I would need to take the length times the width. If I was trying to find the area of this rectangle, we would want length times height. And if we wanted the area of this rectangle, we would take the width times the height. Now again, this only gives us three of the sides, but if I wanted the total area, the first thing we'd have to do is to take these three different rectangles and we'd have to add them together. But again, this would only give us three of the sides. Since the total surface area consists of six sides, we'd have to take this area and double it, thus giving us the formula for the total surface area of a rectangular prism. As we look at our formula, very important that we have the calculator calculate this formula correctly. In other words, if your calculator does order of operations, it would actually do just this last calculation part first, where we needed to actually add these three areas together prior to doubling it. Therefore, it is important that once you've added your three separate areas together that you push equals and then times two. Remember that surface area is always labeled with square units. This concludes the surface area of a rectangular prism.